Hi guys, Oshale here, and I'm here to film the end of the year book tag. And this tag was originally created by Ariel Bissett, I believe, so I will link her video down in the description box if you want to go check that out. I believe she created that a few years ago now, but I have been eyeing this tag, and so I just thought I would go ahead and do it. No one's tagged me, usually no one tags me, or I don't know if they've tagged me in a tag. So if you are watching and you make booktube videos and you ever tag me, you're going to have to like message me or Instagram DM me because I just never know. And YouTube does not notify us. You know, there's no like official way to tag people. But I digress. So I just wanted to do this one real bad. I thought it was a great way to wrap up reading plans for the end of the year instead of doing a formal December TBR. And also, I just love doing tag videos. They're great ways to share like new books that I'm loving or hating or whatever on this channel without doing, you know, a formal video on these books. And also, I enjoy the fact that I get to tag people. So for this specific video, I'm not tagging anyone in particular. If you're watching and you want to do this video, then feel free. Oh, if you hear any strange noises, that would be Teddy playing on the floor. So for question number one, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? And for this one, I chose And I Darken by Kirsten White. As you can see, I'm a good portion of the way into reading this one. And I definitely want to wrap this up before 2018 ends. I'm really enjoying it. It's actually starting to get really good. It's starting to get really getting to that climax part of the story so I definitely want to get to this and wrap it up by the end of the year. Question number two, do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year? Now for this I picked Harry po Potter and my shelves are really crazy right now so I couldn't get to my Harry Potter book to pull it. I'm making my way through the illustrated versions um, but usually it's just a Harry Potter book whichever one I choose. I also really enjoy listening to the audiobooks. Question number three, is there a new release you're still waiting for? There is not. Um, no, I do not believe so. Nothing I can think of. I think all of my highly anticipated new releases have already come out and are on my shelves. Number four, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? I had a little bit more than three. I think I had four. But the first book that I want to finish up is... P.S. Forgive My Adolescence. This is by Tori Oglesby, who is a writer friend of mine on Instagram. I have been following her for quite a few years now and just following her writer's journey of writing this book. I am quite a good portion in and I'm definitely enjoying it. I just got sidetracked because NaNoWriMo started and it was really intense and this book is very emotionally draining because it talks about really dark topics in a sense and so I didn't really want to be reading this while I'm also writing like a book that talks about dark topics it would have been a little bit too much so I set this aside in the month of November but I definitely want to get back to it and finish it up the next book is a fairly new release and this is well-read black girl finding our stories discovering ourselves and this is an anthology that was edited by glory Edom. And I've been following her on Instagram for quite some time. I believe she started a book club that has now become quite popular. She's the founder of the Well-Read Black Girl Book Club. And it says, a brilliant collection of essential American reading, smart, powerful, and complete. And that was blurbed by Ming Jin Lee, author of Pachinko. Now, what drew me to this, not just because I highly, highly admire Glory Edom and what she's done with Black, Well Read Black Girl and how it's grown and really become this huge, huge thing, is I also love the idea of an anthology. A lot of my favorite authors are included in here, as well as other authors that I have been curious about for years but have not yet had a chance to explore their work. We have Jasmine Ward, Donnell Clayton, Gabrielle Sidibe, who is an actress that I admire. We also have Lynn Nottage, who is one of my favorite playwrights of all time. Yeah, so we just have a great collection of stories by amazing, amazing black women who are very talented writers and playwrights and essayists and thinkers and just brilliant women. And I just, I'm obsessed. I love it. The third book I chose, I started earlier this month or towards the end of November, and that is 
Rose in Bloom by Louisa May Alcott and this is a sequel to Eight Cousins and this is one of my childhood favorites. This is a classic. I adore this novel. This basically takes us on the journey of Rose growing up, blooming so to speak, and through her later adolescent years as she's being courted and being courted by some of her cousins. She has eight boy cousins and she's the only girl. She was taken in by her uncle when her parents died and she was raised by her uncle but she was also raised by all of her aunts and all of her aunts have all these sons and that's how she's surrounded, surrounded by these eight boy cousins and she's the only girl. And so her parents left her a huge fortune when they passed which her uncle then kind of became the conservator for, as kind of holding on to. And so she is an heiress. And so in this novel, she's kind of exploring and navigating her social life and kind of being out in the social scene, being courted by various men. And like I said, some of them even being her own cousins. And she's trying to navigate the waters to see who's really trustworthy, who really cares for her, for her and who's only interested in marrying her for her fortune. And also she is a bit unconventional for a woman of this time because she has very independent ideals that have been instilled in her by her uncle who has raised her to be a little bit against the norm for a woman of this time. So I believe this no novel takes place, what is the year? Let's see, it's in the 1800s. I wanna say mid, mid to late 1800s doesn't specifically say um but that would be my guess and the extra bonus one i chose i just could not ha not have this in this question in this answer and that is becoming michelle obama this is oh i feel like you can't really see it because of the glare okay there we go yes i am so hyped for this and I'm actually going to be reading this along with the audiobook. So I will be actually flipping along because I don't want to miss out on the photos. Because there's some photos in here. But I also am going to go ahead and obtain the audiobook because it's narrated by Michelle Obama. Like, how? <laughs> why? How? Why wouldn't you want to experience that? Mind blown. Question number five. Is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? And for this question, I chose Circe by Madeline Miller. I started this months ago towards, I want to say like right before the summer, middle of summer, I can't remember, in the warmer months. And I was getting really into it and I don't remember what threw me off. I think I was writing another novel at that time and I just couldn't handle like fully devoting myself to this novel and writing the novel I was writing at that time at the same time. That's usually what derails me from reading books, honestly, is my writing. So I put this aside and I just never picked it back up because I'm such a mood reader and I just haven't been in the mood for like ancient Greek mythology type stuff. But I really, like something in me really just wants to continue this month. So I have added this to my unofficial TBR because me and TBRs, as you guys, many of y'all know, do not really get along. I have tried them numerous times over the years and it just never works out for me. But yes, so this one could definitely become one of my favorites of the year. I just feel it in my soul. And then number six is, have you already started making reading plans for 2018? I have in a way, I've decided I'm not going to make any strict guidelines for myself like I have in previous years. I usually do like a top 10 I wanna read in the next year video, but I think I'm actually going to do a top 10 series I wanna read because that will be more likely to happen. There's several series that I need to complete, so I think it will be a top, not read, but top 10 series I need to finish. Um, so those are the formal reading plans that I'm making for 2019 at this point. No other reading plans, and I don't think that I will be. I'm unsure if I will continue with my TBR jar. I really like the idea of it, and I had a lot of fun actually creating the jar and, you know, thinking of the books to go in the jar. But the follow-through of picking the books from the jar and then reading those particular books is not really great because most times I'm not in the mood for the books that I pick and I'm not good with just randomly selecting books and then reading. I'm very intentional with the books that I pick because I am a mood reader and I read according to what is, you know, attracting me to a particular book or genre at that moment in time. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to make any set in stone 
reading plans for 2019. But we shall see, the month is still young. Well, that is it for this video. I hope I didn't miss any questions. If I did, then I will just answer them in either in the description box or like in a blank comment card after this clip. But these are all the books that I hope to get to before the end of the year in my unofficial TBR. So we'll see. Keep your fingers crossed for me that I actually make it through. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Take care. Happy holidays. Bye. To film this with NaNoWriMo going on last month and just like the holidays, working all these hours a week. It's, it's been hectic, you guys. Rolling up my sleeves and ready for this haul. I haven't done a haul in a while. I did do a haul during my NaNoWriMo vlogging, just like a, an accumulative, accumulative haul of books that I bought recently. So I will link that right now if you wanna go check that out. But I haven't done like a real, like full on, I bought a whole bunch of books at the same time formal haul in forever. So I'm so hyped because these are some of my absolute favorite videos to film. I know hauls are very controversial here on YouTube and on BookTube as well, but I don't care. I